in Unit 2 we will familiarize ourselves with an interpretation technique. This unit is divided into five sections. Section 1. Process of interpretation. Each topic or problem needs an interpretation that determines possible aims and thereby the nature of the research project. Each candidate has the duty but also the right to develop an interpretation of the topic. The technique of interpretation implies three process steps. First, negative interpretation. Second, positive interpretation. Third, decision and selection. In general, the candidate is free to select one interpretation for his research project, but only if the topic allows for more than one interpretation. For thesis projects, it is advisable to coordinate the desired interpretation of the topic with the thesis advisor. Section 2 Negative interpretation. It is easier to start with a negative interpretation prior to the positive interpretation of a topic than vice versa. Negative interpretation means to identify aspects that are not covered by the topic. The definition of the terminology helps to postulate a negative interpretation. Our sample topic is Project finance of windmill farms under the Renewable Energy Act, EEG. Project finance has to be addressed, but not corporate finance or asset finance. Windmill farms have to be addressed, but not other forms of renewable energy, such as solar energy or hydropower. German Renewable Energy Act, EEG, implies a German focus, but not a European focus or a global focus. Section 3. Positive Interpretation The positive interpretation intends to identify possible aims of a research project. Potential aims of research projects are Description, causal connection, intention, function, comparison. In many cases, there is more than one aim possible, either requiring a selection of one aim or allowing for a combination of two or more aims in a research or thesis project. Section 4. Selection of a name. As already explained, there are three process steps in order to derive an interpretation of a topic. Negative interpretation, positive interpretation, and finally, the selection of a name. However, the decision on a name can be a challenging task, especially if more than one aim is possible. In a situation where the problem setting is known, an analysis of the context might be helpful. The context of the problem setting can be purely academic or linked to a practical problem. It helps to identify the nature of the research task. Thereby, one can narrow the options down to those aims which serve the research purpose best. Section 5. Mini Case Windy Decision In the following, there is a description of our sample case entitled Windy Decision. A local bank in a rural area has been approached by a farmer who wants to erect a small windmill farm on his farmland. The farmer has funds available that will only cover up to 20% of the investment costs. Therefore, he applies for a loan that will make up for the remaining 80%. Besides of the windmill and the income derived from electricity sales, he is not able to provide additional collateral or security to the bank. As a consequence, the electricity sales become a key factor for the financial feasibility. 
the farmer claims that electricity sales are guaranteed by the German Renewable Energy Act, the EEG. The bank has no experience concerning windmill project financings. Therefore, the executive committee of the bank asks the credit department to provide a memorandum that analyzes the interdependencies between the EEG and project financing of windmill projects in general. The inherent topic of the mini case windy decision is project finance of windmill farms under the Renewable Energy Act. Again, on the left hand side, the three process steps of interpretation are laid out negative interpretation, positive interpretation, and finally the selection of a name. In this case, the problem setting is known. The mini case windy decision provides information with respect to the context. The context is the credit decision to be made by the local bank. In order to come up with a credit decision, the executive committee needs more information regarding the interdependencies between EEG and financial feasibility of windmill project financing. This leads to the conclusion that a functional research aim is appropriate which analyzes the functional relation between the German EEG on the one hand and the financial feasibility of windmill project financing on the other hand.